special inbox segment. This one is going to get uh, going to get a little bit crazy. Now, I know a lot of you guys get tired of hearing about the 1996 Telecommunications Act and get tired of hearing about the the cable companies. Well, screw that. They're ruining our future. So sit down and listen to this. This video is for anybody who hears about the 1996 Telecommunications Act and has no idea what it is, or this is um, gonna be something that you guys can share to help spread the message. You guys are the evangelists. We gotta get this out there so that everyone knows what is up so that we can change the world. That's what it's all about. So let's go to Malik Wu 100. Mal Malik Wu two, two, oh, Malik 200. I missed, I missed the T, I've screwed it up. The video is over. All right, <laughs> this question, what is the 1996 Telecommunications Act? You mention it in your videos all the time. What exactly? Is this thing with a period? Oh, it's, a, it's not a question. It's what exactly is this thing? I'm so glad you asked. No, <laughs> this is uh, a, <clears throat> this belongs in its own video. So hopefully we'll remember to cut it out and put it in its own thing. Well, we'll probably end up making a, a more in-depth video. We could probably talk about this for a minute, but we, we probably should make a really succinct video that people can just give to, you know, their friends and that sort of thing. I mean, we could just make this a separate video right now, but I don't know. Let's talk about it. <laughs> All so, right. So there's on the forum, there's an outline that is a piece of an outline that's about the 96 Telecommunications Act. And so what you have to understand is that in, in 1996, you know, dial-up modems were all the rage. Bulletin board systems were a thing. Uh, that's where you literally dial in with your modem. If you've ever used a fax, it's like that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that I'm telling people that have no idea what a modem is, but it used <laughs> to be that the internet ran over phone lines for end users and DSL and cable and all this kind of stuff was not even a thing. Like well, it, it, it was it pretty much. I mean, it was just noise in a phone line, and that's how you did data, and it was very slow. I think the easiest way to describe like a BBS would be like our our you know tech syndicate would have a phone number, and you would dial into that, and then you would connect specifically to our website through the, through dialing in. Pretty much yes. it, right? Yeah, that's pretty much it. And it was primarily text based. I mean, you could interact with other people, and there were forums, and you could share information. It was text based. The Kansas City Public Library um, had free um, text-based internet access forever toward the end or toward the, the end of its useful lifetime. They had it to where you could get on the, the internet proper, the World Wide Web proper, but a lot of this is before, you know, the World Wide Web was really, really taking root. And so in 96, for commercial purposes, the internet was starting to take off and it was the beginning of the dot-com bubble. And you know, so, if you were young back then, you may remember Clinton and Gore, the information superhighway, the information superhighway. We've got to get the information superhighway. We're going to do it for the children. It's going to be amazing, and it's going to change the world. And then they were just, every time you see him give a speech, the information superhighway is going to be the key to our future in the nations of the world type thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, all of those things. And um, it was, it was sort of the government looking at industry and saying, we don't trust you to deal with this yourself. We think you need some government oversight. But because this is such bleeding edge stuff, we don't know how to regulate you. So come up with some ideas. And the 96 Telecommunications Act. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Well, ask, the, ask them <laughs> to like, hey, we, we don't know how to keep you guys in line. Why don't you give us some guidelines so that we can keep you in line? In, oh great! <laughs> it's you know in, in we'd like cake instead of a spanking. I don't I don't know that that was completely unreasonable in '96 because it it wasn't. I mean there were there were dozens of phone companies. We didn't have the three phone companies that we have yeah. now. There you know the AT and T breakup happened in the '80s, and so there were all these Baby Bell phone companies, and everybody was wanting to compete with everybody else. And you had MCI, WorldCom, and you know WorldCom was like, we sell long distance. Can we also get in the television market and that sort of thing? But in law, the 96 Telecommunications Act basically overhauled everything. Cable television, the competition system, the whole nine yards. And one of the key features of it, and I'm oversimplifying here, and I'm going to get flamed for it, but uh, <laughs> one of the oversimplification things is that they wanted to separate infrastructure from services. Because in 96, with dial-up, one of the key things with that is if you, you were paying for your phone line, and you were paying the phone company for your phone line, you could call whoever you wanted to get internet service or data service. If you wanted to call a local BBS, you called a local BBS. If that BBS had a pay-for internet connection, like a T1 line or an ISDN line or something like that, you could get on the internet through that. And so um, you had providers like AOL and CompuServe that were providing bulletin board systems that later added on internet service. So it's like, you can get on our stuff and the internet, but they're different things. And... Uh, 
these companies were saying, well, it would be really cool if we could provide digital connectivity like T1s and later fiber optic. Fiber optic was a big part of the 96 Telecommunications Act. It would be cool if we could provide infrastructure just like the phone company does, but what you get over that infrastructure is decoupled from the infrastructure itself. And that was called the competitive local exchange carrier system. And so that meant that, you know, Joe Bob's bait and tackle shop could go and rent some phone lines and put DSL on it if they wanted to. And the cost for that would be whatever the local infrastructure cost. There would not be a bundling of services, as it were. And so on paper, this seemed like a really good idea. But what actually happened is all this cool stuff that was in there, uh, they, the incumbent carriers slowly chipped away at that. Um, the rules for who can own what changed, and as a result, we got wave after wave after wave of mergers. And so all these hundreds of communications companies merged to like seven, and then those merged to like three that we have today, which is really scary. So that, that's basically what they did. They sat down with everybody in Congress and like, listen, we need to be able to move fast. We need to be nimble. We need to be able to do these things without tons of regulation. So if you guys could just deregulate everything, we will give you this gigantic list of wonderful deliverables uh, that are going to benefit the United States and going to benefit, therefore, the rest of you know mankind as we go forth into the future. And everyone was like, yay, the, the big ISPs, go forth and do these things. So they took all the deregulation and they're like, thank you very much. And then they did just what Wendell said. They started buying up other companies because, you know, part of the deregulation dere uh, was that they made it easier for them to buy other companies and also allowed them to buy more companies. So now they're consolidating and consolidating and consolidating, removing options from the customers. And at the same time, they're not following through with their deliverables. See, so, the, this legislation ahead. freed up a ton of money, which they then used to buy each other instead of investing in their own infrastructure. And the, one of the last <laughs> vestiges of that is happening with Comcast and Time Warner. They're like, man, we've got so much money. We have no idea what to do with it. Let's buy another company that's our own size so that there can just be one company because that makes sense. Well, that's exactly what you see with all this Netflix bickering. Again, Netflix is a red herring. They just don't want to upgrade their infrastructure, and they're blaming everyone else. And the reason, I think right here, is the real reason that they don't want to upgrade their infrastructure. It's because their mentality has changed, and all of the money that they make, all of their profit, gets put into a special place, and it is only used to buy other companies, not actually upgrade their company. That's And it's a mentality change, it's a shift, uh, and it, a lot of it started uh, from the seeds that were planted during the meetings that led up to the 1996 Telecommunications Act. Well, if you look at if you look at what specifically was promised, I mean, it sounds like we're blowing a lot of smoke and hot air, but all right, let's look at what the act actually promised in writing to deliver. By 2006, the legislation was supposed to have saved consumers a half a trillion dollars over $300 billion in long-distance rates, $32 billion in lower local phone costs, and $78 billion in lower cable bills. Oh, my God. I've saved so much since then, <laughs> said <laughs> no <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. We'll get to that because it's, a, it's hilarious. I mean, these, these things are crazy. <laughs> Industry executives supporting the legislation provided projections that it would create 1.5 million jobs and boost the economy by $2 trillion. Now, those jobs would come from infrastructure upgrades and deploying fiber optic everywhere and blah, 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 and all that. The industry pitched that essentially by separating infrastructure from business that they could get into each other's business, which would promote competition and lower prices. That's what I was talking about with the divorce of infrastructure. For, just like you can dial up into any ISP in the olden days like you could in the 90s, you could, quote, unquote, dial up into whatever fiber provider. So you have your, your local fiber connection, and if you want to get your cable TV from you know, uh, Time Warner, that's fine. If you want to get your cable TV from Comcast, that's fine. If you want to get your cable TV from a half a dozen other providers, that's completely fine. If your internet wants to come from, you know, Quest or WorldCom or one of those, that's completely fine. One of the reasons that WorldCom went out of business, they cratered spectacularly, is because they uh, spent a bunch of money to, to they were a long distance provider, to uh, do local phone service. And this competitive local exchange carrier meant they were supposed to have access to local customers. But they had set up a system 
to basically carry all of their voice traffic over IP years ahead of everybody. And AT&T, the Baby Bells, were so scared of that that they fought WorldCom for years to try to prevent them from having access to their customers. And ultimately, it bankrupted WorldCom, and they ended up selling their assets for pennies on the dollar. And that was, that was a con major contributing factor. Um, they said in the 96 Telecommunications Act that pervasive broadband penetration by 2010 with quote-unquote dizzying internet speeds <laughs> in even rural areas. Now, what does that translate to? There were some of the C-SPAN interviews where these guys were saying you could get a 45 megabit symmetric, that's 45 up and down, up and down. for $20 a month. You don't have that anywhere in America. Nowhere. What was the promise in Louisville? That was a, that was a key point on there. Uh, Louisville, uh, Louisville was mentioned, and I think in Louisville it was like by 2006... And uh, I think it was. I think the forty-five by forty-five was going to be available for twenty dollars a month in Louisville, but for like a hundred dollars a month, it was like two hundred fifty megabit or something crazy like that. And so it's like in in Louisville right now, uh, you got Insight that I think was just bought by Time Warner, and I think when Time Warner bought Insight, they raised prices by thirty percent. Yeah, and we mentioned Louisville because Louisville is sort of a central spot in the country. Louisville and Memphis are like two key cities when it comes to shipping lanes, but also infrastructure. A lot of infrastructure goes through there. So, I mean, if you can get that speed in Louisville, the implications are that a lot of the areas around there where we will have really fast internet as well. It's a, it's a good measuring stick, I suppose. Now, I've got a quote from a television, a television executive that's just full of delicious, delicious irony. And the television executive, <laughs> Yeah, it's like... <laughs> And I've got a cold, so it's like I can't do this properly, but I apologize for that. It's like at a time when we as a country are legitimately concerned about creating information haves and haves not, it makes no sense to deprive the public of the opportunity to receive free the high quality picture and sound that would otherwise be available only on a subscription basis. Now, he's talking about high def digital television, making sure everybody has that. But now the television industry is trying to outlaw Arrow. Arrow is letting people in areas that have iffy uh, digital signal subscribe to a DVR that's basically located on a tower so they can get really good signal, and then it pipes them that signal over the Internet. And it's sort of a loophole because you can't rebroadcast like with cable television. And so Arrow is sort of filling in the gaps in the television executives who are like, yeah, we want to give away high-def television, we just don't want to make it easy, is what they're saying. It's, I mean, it's just, it's, oh, somebody ought to be fining somebody <laughs> here. This is crazy. Wait, wait, you, you forgot to read the fine print. If you go to the Wikipedia page and you read the fine print, you'll find out that what that television executive said uh, was, was said on opposite day. So <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the catch you forgot to mention there. It was the, opposite uh, day. The, they were also, the television companies were also supposed to give back the analog spectrum. Uh, so that it could be used for other things, but they fought tooth and nail not to give it back. I think they did ultimately give most of it back, but only very, very recently. And uh, there's, it's too complicated to get into for this one. But uh, and the other thing is the f uh, fiber optic, coast to coast, the whole like we should have fiber optic. We've paid for fiber optic. The FCC was put in charge of some of this, and other taxes were repealed. So if you talk about tax savings. These companies have saved, and these communications companies have saved an astronomical amount of money in tax dollars that they're still legally allowed to collect, but they don't have to send to the federal government. And some of the side effects of that is like people in rural areas used to have the Public Utilities Commission, and the Public Utilities Commission would maintain a fund so that people in cities in your state um, would help subsidize the cost of wiring the rural parts of your state. But now, because of these changes, uh, there aren't really any funds in there for the Public Utilities Commission to help fund things in rural areas. So if you're building a house in a rural area or you have growth in a rural area, it's going to cost somebody $30,000 to get a crappy copper phone line hooked up to their house because that's what it costs to wire it. There's not a Public Utilities Commission fund available to help fund that kind of thing. Yeah, you know, when I was looking for places, um, recently I was looking way in the woods because... I think after you live in a, I don't know, around people for a while, it's like, okay, I'm going to go out and live in the woods. But also, I really wanted to, um, oh, where was I going with this? Um, I lost my train of thought. Uh, living in the woods. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's just so inexpensive, and you can have a lot more. So I really wanted a nice big space to do all the tech syndicate stuff, and it's much easier if you live in the woods. And so I started pricing, you know, like, hey, let's just run a cable to the house. What's it going to cost? A couple thousand dollars? No, it's like $60,000 to run a cable about, I don't know, 100 feet from the, you know, from the connection right over here on on the main street. It's unbelievable, but that if if 
everything. That's one, of the, that's one of the reasons why it's so hard to start an ISP is because these companies have not been sitting here idle. They've made it very difficult for people to run things and interface with their poles and blah, blah. It's like, I just need to bury a cable. And they're like, well, no, you need to get the public utilities people to come out and okay it. And then you need a permit. Then you have to have somebody who's licensed in zoology in order to be able to do whatever. Over on the oversight requirements from 1997 to 2005, a small number of companies have spent more than 400 million on political contributions and lobbying in DC on this. That's crazy. <clears throat> money they could have been using to upgrade their infrastructure. Everyone agrees that there's been massive deregulation. The effect of that has arguably not been lower prices and more competition. If anything, it's been the opposite. Yeah, quite. And the massive wave of media mergers means that a very small handful of companies control almost American media. The Internet is shifting to be a major source of American media and at present is, is kind of free of this oligopoly. But look what we've got happening to the Internet. The Internet access is being concentrated in the hands of fewer and fewer and fewer companies. The pattern for this for long distance, for telephone, for cable television has been terrible. We should not stand for this. With Internet access, it's, it's going to ruin the Internet. Uh, let's see. Local TV stations produce less local news because it's not profitable, because they're owned by out-of-town corporations. National news is no longer about news, but more about ratings. I think we can all agree on that, so it drives sensationalism and making a profit. Uh, former Clinton staffer has said that the goal here was to strike a balance between industry and the public interest, but no sooner had the law passed than we see the special interests go to court to try to stifle the provisions of the thing that they had previously agreed to. So it's like, hmm. Yeah, it's like I said, um, they said a lot of nice things, and, and companies like Verizon have been vehemently fighting all of the things that they said were going to happen. They, they, it's like they said yes to these things when they sat down with everybody, and then as soon as they left the room, they're like, all right, let's sue them and tell them that there's no way in hell that they can make us do this. That's unconstitutional or whatever BS they make up. But they go and they fight against all this stuff, and they spend millions of dollars fighting against it. So they spend their money on that. They spend their money on lobbying, and they also spend their money on buying other companies. Other than that, they're looking to everybody else to spend the money to, you know, to upgrade the infrastructure. Like they want Netflix to do it, or they want Cogent to do it, or they want the, uh, the people who use the internet the most, they want them to do it. They don't want to spend any of their money that they made from offering a service to us. Never mind. Now, in, in, federal, in federal law, for a while there, these competitive carriers, the competitive local exchange carriers, theoretically in law, had access to local telephone lines so that they could offer their services over the local infrastructure. But SBC actually sued to prevent access to that local infrastructure, which stifled competition. And so if you want to approach it from the other way, you want to look at it, Business Week had this really great article series uh, years ago that was, well, what are they doing in other countries? And so in other countries where the incumbent phone companies were forced to give access to their infrastructure at a reasonable rate, small local companies brought innovation to their communities, and high-speed Internet access flourished for very low prices. I mean, I think that's the kind of thing that we see, like in Romania, where you have the Google Fiber or Gigabit for $40 a month or $20 a month or whatever it is. And that's just a few, uh, you know, a few of the things that have happened. I mean, we've got um, all these companies are consolidating. Obviously, we talked about that over and over. That's another product, you know, specifically from the 1996 Telecommunications Act. I mean, pretty soon, if this keeps up, we're going to have like one or two. I mean, Comcast is going to buy a Time Warner, and then they're going to start looking at Verizon and maybe AT&T because of those companies. They make a lot of noise, and, uh, you know, they do make a lot of money but they're not nearly as big, especially, especially if you know Comcast is able to purchase Time Warner. It's going to be 10 times the size of the second largest company. It's going to be absolutely gargantuan. So they're going to start trying to buy those other ones, You know, like give it another year. It's like every year, it's like, okay, who's buying who this year? Okay, it's AT&T trying to buy T-Mobile, and we're lucky that got stopped. But I think the problem there was they didn't line the correct pockets in Washington, D.C., and these guys have been lobbying like crazy and you know lining all the correct pockets going on ski vacations and all sorts of things so they should have an easier time when it comes to consolidation purchasing other companies and that sort of thing but clearly um, it doesn't work why are we still doing it why are we as citizens per permitting our elected representatives to misrepresent our will 
I mean, part of it may be just outrage fatigue. It's like we're just so outraged about everything that we're just paralyzed. Well, yeah, a lot of people are even sick of hearing us talk about it. I am sick of hearing us talk about it, to tell you the <laughs> truth. But, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. We, we're, we can't not talk about it if we actually care about the future of the Internet and the future of, well, frankly, our livelihood. And a lot of you guys out there are going to depend on the Internet for your livelihood, and we don't want these guys to screw it up. So we're going to have to do something. And a lot of it also, I think, is just that the people, the powers that be, truly do not understand. I think some of them think that they're doing the right things because, the you know, let's face it, they're rich. They run around in very wealthy circles uh, where they don't really have to worry about any of this stuff. If, they, if something costs more, they pay for it. If something gets in their way, they just either drive over it and let someone else clean up after them or they just pay for it, pay it off. Um, and then the only person whispering in their ear is their friend who happens to be the VP of whatever at AT&T or the, the CEO of Verizon or whatever. That's the only person giving them counsel. And they don't have, uh, you know, any, there, there's, there's no one from the citizenry. There's no, we have no seat at the table right now. And I think based upon the information they're getting from their peers, they, some of them actually think they're doing the right thing. And that is even scarier than, you know, evil for the sake of evil. It's, Evil thinking they're doing good. That's like a true tragedy. I mean, we've got like uh, what's the what's the guy from uh, Nemo? Is that his name? The guy from uh, oh no, that's that's what's um, Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea. That's uh, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's. Uh, but the definition of insanity is repeating the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. <laughs> so we've got a bunch of insane people with way too much money trying to do the right thing. It'll work this time because I'm in charge, and then it's like no, no. <laughs> No, that's right. not how that works at all. Now, so what, what this, is, this is so large. This could be its own standalone. Like, we could do, like, an honest, proper two-hour-plus documentary on this. So if Ashton Kutcher or uh, Mike Judge are watching because you're into the whole Silicon Valley thing now, contact us. We'd love to make it happen. Yeah, if you guys care. <laughs> you guys should care. Guilt trip, all right? Or, you know, <laughs> producers that work with those guys. Yeah, well, we'll make it happen. We'll, we'll make that happen soon enough. Maybe we can do our own Kickstarter. That would be kind of fun because it's like, look at how outraged you should be. But, I mean, it's just uh, so Yeah, and then instead of us just sitting here, it could be like animations on the screen with like, you know how like documentaries about information and stuff always have that soft xylophone going in the background? We'll get one of those and like, do, 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 do. And then the information does this and this and we'll have stuff on the screen. You guys will love it. And then you can show... Your grandparents and your uh, person who doesn't know anything about the internet and your favorite soccer star, you can show all those people who don't use the internet and they'll understand it because there'll be soft xylophone in the background going ding, 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 ding. And they're like, ooh. I think soft xylophone triggers something in your brain that makes you think mathematically. Because every time I see a documentary about this kind of stuff, it's always soft xylophone. The dial-up model really wasn't bad. And you have that in some apartment buildings. I mean, there are apartment buildings in, in New York City where it is fiber to every flat. And in the basement, all of the fiber comes to the, the, the head end in the basement. And it's like, oh, I'm going to go with this provider and that provider and whatever. And that provider just patches into their patch panel. It could be like that for all of America. I mean, if you think about like the dial-up model, when you have dial-up, you're paying for your phone line and then you're dialing in to somebody else. And that's where you get your service from. If you could have that with a dedicated circuit, it's like, here's my local metro Ethernet connection or here's my local loop fiber connection. I want service from this company. That makes a lot of sense. And from an infrastructure standpoint, if it's a decentralized control, we're already there. We just have greedy companies in charge that don't want to share. We do have some ideas of some things that we can do to combat this, uh, and we'll make some future videos just for you guys, to give you guys some ideas of you know, what we and what you and what all of us can do together as a society. Uh, and again, like we said, we may even have a documentary in the works if uh, things go the correct way uh, and we don't get shot. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much um, where we stand now. And uh, this video is something that you guys can share to people who you know, have no idea what it is. There's a lot more than just the 96 Telecommunications Act, but... It is a good idea to know what it is and to know where we came from, to know where we're headed. Because smart people that were well-meaning looked at this and tried to anticipate how greed and corporations could go wrong. And they did the most exactly wrong thing that they possibly could have, ultimately.